Ali radiallahu anhu said, those who are mindful of their Lord will be led into the garden. And when they arrive at the gate of it, they're going to find a tree. And at the root of that tree, there are two streams that are flowing out. So they approach one of them just as they have been commanded and they drink from it. And then all of the dirt and the filth and the foulness on the inside is washed away. And then they drink from the other and they do wudu from its water. And everything on the outside is washed away. And this gives them this radiance that is Jannah-like. And after that, he said, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that their skin will never change, it will never crack, their hair will never be disheveled again, and it is as if they have been polished. Then they reach the keepers of paradise who will say to them, Salamun alaykum tibatum fadkhuluha khalidin. Peace be on to you. You have become purified. Enter it now and abide therein forever. When the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina and he gave his first address to the people, the first thing he said about getting to Jannah was, Afshu salam, spread peace. And the last thing he said was, Tadkhulul Jannata bi salam, you will enter into Jannah in peace. So you want to be welcomed into Jannah with salam, then spread salam. And when we look at the way the angels greet us, the angels say, Salamun alaykum tibatum, peace be on to you. You have become purified, so enter into it forever. Now pay attention carefully to each of these phrases. Salamun alaykum. You will only have peace all around you. So the scholars say that means you will be safe from your environment. Tlibatum, you have become purified, so you're safe from any of your own sins or anything that is internal inside of you. Fadkhuluha khalidin. So enter it forever. You are safe from the eternal, meaning you're safe from time, you're safe from expiration, you're safe from any enemy, you're safe from ever being expelled from Al-Jannah. In contrast, the people of Hellfire are told, didn't you get warnings? Didn't you get messengers? Didn't you get signs? And the punishment is only increased by the pain of them knowing that they had so many chances to respond to the call of Dar salam the place of peace and hellfire only gets worse. The scholars say, pay attention to how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Udkhulu abwaaba jahannam, enter through the gates of hellfire. But then Allah says, Udkhuluha, enter into jannah. So what's the difference between enter the gates and enter into? As for enter the gates, when the people of hellfire enter the gates, the gates shut behind them and it only gets worse inside. Innaha alayhim mu'sada, it will be shut on them and sealed tight and there are extended columns behind them. And these are columns that will be holding the gates from behind like a huge stone which is placed behind the gate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that fate. Allahumma ameen. As for those who enter into Jannah, it is udkhuluha bi salam. Enter into it in peace, meaning roam freely. No one would want to walk out. And in this world, you close gates to either trap something or to protect yourself. The people of paradise don't need to be trapped and they don't need protection from anything. So there's no mention of the gates of paradise ever closing on the believers. Now, technically, you also don't need a guide because you know exactly where to go. And in fact, you're more familiar with your home in paradise than you are with your home in this world. The Prophet said, By the one in whose hand is my soul, one of you will know your home in paradise better or as much as you knew your home in this dunya. And this is the tafsir of a home in paradise that Allah made known to them. Allah says, Arrafaha lahum. He made it known to them. And that too is connected to our deeds. Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah said, وصف الله تعالى لهم الجنة في الدنيا فلما دخلوها عرفوها بصفتها Allah has described paradise to them in this world in such a way that once they enter into Jannah, they will know it by its description. So you will remember everything we spoke about in this series, inshaAllah ta'ala, when you actually enter into Jannah بإذن الله تعالى. So what's the purpose then of an angel that guides you? That's only to make you feel more welcomed. Muqatib ibn Hayyan said that we are told that the angel entrusted 
with the care of the children of Adam, will walk in paradise, and the child of Adam will follow him, and he will show him all of his properties until he reaches the final dwelling, and then he will tell the person about everything that he was given in Jannah. And then once you enter into your home with your family, the angel goes away. And in one narration, the angel says, Ana amrik, That I am your caretaker and you have been entrusted to me. So you have a whole welcoming committee in Jannah and it starts with the angels. Humayd ibn Hilal rahimahullah, says that when one enters paradise and is given the form of the people of paradise and then dressed up with their dress, and then adorned with their jewelry, and then shown the maidens and the servants and all that is in there of the creations of paradise, that you become so happy that if it was possible, you would die out of joy. And then it is said to that person, you see this happiness that is overwhelming you? It's going to be like this forever. <laughs> Meaning you're always going to be this happy, like your first entrance. Al-Dahaq rahimahullah said, and then when the believer enters into Jannah, the angel leads him to all of its different lanes and pathways and says, what do you see here? And you say, I see palaces of gold and silver. And the angel says, all of that is for you. And then when you reach there, there are servants at every gate of every palace and they welcome you and they say, Nahnu lak, we are for you. And then the angel says, walk with me further and says, what do you see here? And you say, I see beautiful canopies and companions. And it will be said to him that all of this is for you. And then you reach there and you are received by them and they will say to you, Nahnu lak, we are for you. And Abu Abdurrahman al-Jubari says, and then when the believer enters heaven first, he is received by 70,000 servants as if they are shiny pearls. Two rows of those servants are arranged on both sides, neither one of them seeing the other. And anytime you walk, they follow you, they walk with you. And the spouses of paradise welcome each other by saying what? You are my love and I am your love. And that's all of the other welcomings. But what about the greatest welcomer of all? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that Allah will say to the people of paradise, Ya ahl al Jannah, O people of paradise. And the people of paradise will say, Labbayka wa sa'daik. Here we are, O oh Allah. Here we come. What is it, O oh Allah? And these people are the same people that used to say la bayk Allah in this life. Here we come, O oh Allah, here we come. And now they're saying it in Jannah. What is it, O oh Allah? We're ready. And Allah says, Har waditum, are you pleased? And they say, how could we not be pleased when you've given us everything that we could possibly want and things that you've not given to anyone else of your creation? And Allah says, I'm going to give you something that's better than all of that. And they say, Ya Rabb, our Lord, what is better than that? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that I am pleased with you forever and I will never be angry with you again. Now, subhanAllah, that shows how in this beautiful abode of Allah's pleasure, if He wasn't pleased with us, He wouldn't have given us all of these palaces in paradise. But here He is saying, this is me being pleased with you forever. And that's the greatest welcome. And as you enter your home in paradise, there's a logic to each one of these palaces and each of these homes. And they're not all of the same genre. So no one feels like they have a smaller home or they live in a worse neighborhood in Jannah. But the most special homes in paradise are for those who responded to severe trials with exemplary patience. So this genre of homes is not because of specific deeds, which we're going to talk about later, but this is about that quality of people who just wanted Allah's pleasure no matter what. So when Asiya alayhi salam says, My Lord, Rabbibni li indaka baytan fil jannah. My Lord, build for me with you a palace in Jannah. She said that as she was sacrificing her home and her comfort in this life all for Allah's pleasure. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave salam to Khadija radiallahu anha through Jibreel alayhi salam. And he gave her the bushra, the glad tidings of a palace in Jannah of special pearls with no noise or fatigue because she gave that type of a home and comfort up in this life all for Allah's pleasure. And when someone loses a child and still praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through that pain, Allah says, build for my servant a house of praise because he lost what made his home praiseworthy in this life. So he deserves a home of praise in paradise. All that person wanted was salam from Allah and the reward of Allah. And now that person has it. So Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah gives us the scene. 
He said, a person enters into their palace in paradise and they know their place. And then you're met with your family who are full of joy and receiving you. And this is even more so than when family come together and rejoice in this life after a loved one has been away for a long time. And then he hears the greetings of all of the new companions of paradise. And then he goes and he reclines on his bed and he looks at the foundation and he notices that even the bed has been erected on beautiful pearls. And he sees green and red and yellow paths and drapes. And he raises his head to the roof of his house. And had he not been created for it, he would have lost his vision. And he says as he's looking around, Alhamdulillah All praises be to Allah who guided us to this. We would have never been able to get this had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not guided us. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'innah irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyah فَدَخُلِي فِي عِبَادِي وَدَخُلِي جَنَّتِي